Whether you're running an e-commerce platform, a SaaS product, or an online service, downtime can mean lost revenue, diminished trust, and a tarnished reputation. So today, I'm going to explain how you can create a robust 24-7 web service support strategy that keeps your web services running smoothly and your customers happy. This is the exact service that we offer to our customers, but we get that some of our customers want to own that whole process. So these are our tips on how a business with a global footprint can set up an enterprise-grade 24-7 web service support team. But first off, why is 24-7 support so crucial? Well, your users are global and issues and inquiries can arise at any time from any time zone. Immediate response and resolution could be the difference between a minor hiccup and a major setback. So creating a dedicated support team is step one. This team is your frontline equipped to handle everything from minor queries to major incidents. But it's not just about having bodies and seats, it's about having skilled professionals ready to tackle any problems at any hour. Now, one thing you can do for that is to consider a follow the sun model. By positioning team members across different time zones, you can provide seamless support without overburdening any single region. If you don't have an engineering presence in the region, remember that you may also need to negotiate regional and local laws and cultural differences, set up offices and all the usual items that are associated with that effort. You'll need to ensure that every team member has comprehensive training on your web services ins and outs so that they can effectively respond to issues. Equally important is empowering your support team to make critical decisions, enhancing that resolution speed, such as rolling back a deployment at 3 a.m. when management are unavailable to approve it. Now, next up is tools, and you can leverage tools to streamline your support. Tools like Zendesk or ServiceNow can help manage, prioritize, and track support requests efficiently. For immediate assistance, live chat options and AI-driven chatbots can help provide quick answers to common queries, freeing up human resources for more complex issues. For example, we have a beta product, the Resolution Hub, which we hope to launch later this year, that can help you resolve cloud issues with your own playbooks, and I'll come back to playbooks later. But it's an interactive chat system that allows you to put in the issue that you're facing, and it'll diagnose the issue with you and help you come up with solutions in order to resolve that issue. In addition, proactive monitoring tools can alert your team to issues before they impact users allowing for preemptive action. And the next thing to consider is developing your processes and protocols. Clear processes are the backbone of effective support. You want to establish detailed protocols for incident management, including the following items. First up is incident management and triage. You want to quickly determine the severity and impact of an issue. Secondly, you want to think about your escalation paths. You want to know when and how to escalate issues within your team to more experienced technical resources. And finally, you want to think about your communication channels. So maintain open lines of communication with your users through status pages, social media, or direct emails, keeping them informed during and after incidents. The next thing to think about is continual improvement and feedback loops. The 24-7 support strategy isn't static. It should evolve based on feedback and data. So you want to implement regular review sessions to analyze past incidents, customer feedback, and response times. Use these insights to refine your approach, training, and tools. Playbooks help you to reduce mean time to resolution, or MTTR, by helping you to carry out remedial actions that come up frequently, such as restarting services, doing manual actions during deployments, clearing caches, or items relating to app-specific logic and components. Next, key metrics help you assess how well you'll be able to respond to incidents. There are those that are directly related to the support service, such as MTTA, which is mean time to acknowledgement, so when a user first acknowledged an issue, there's MTTD, mean time to detection, so how long it took them to detect what the issue was, and mean time to resolution, or MTTR, which is how long it took them to resolve that issue. And you should also track metrics which relate to how well the overall team is operating, such as lead time for changes, which is the time from a commit to when that commit is deployable, and that times how quickly you can get a change through your CI/CD process. There's MTTF, or mean time to failure, which is the time between incidents, and obviously you want that to be as long as possible so you're not having lots of incidents. There's change failure rate, which is of all deployments, what percentage fail, and you want to track this as well as the mean time to failure, because not only do you want a long time between failures, but for every deployment that is made, you want to make sure a high percentage are successful. And then there's deployment frequency, which is how often an organization successfully releases to production. You want to measure both sets of metrics because they both add up to a more stable uptime percentage. If that sounds like something you'd rather not undertake in-house, then don't fear, it's not something that should be entered into lightly. If you prefer, we at Fernie offer a 24-7 managed cloud services and cloud reseller products, which I'll link to below. These give you a variety of levels of support to suit your budgets. Remember, it's about more than just solving problems, it's about building trust and reliability with your users.